Have you ever wondered why do we even need a Bitcoin ETF? What is a better investment, an ETF or an actual Bitcoin? And what will make more money in the long run? I've been wondering about that as well. So in this video, we'll dive into all approved Bitcoin ETFs and find out which one is better. We'll discuss all the differences between Bitcoin ETFs and Bitcoin itself. And we'll talk about the three main things you should consider before buying any of these ETFs. So after watching this video, you'll know if it's worth buying Bitcoin ETFs at all. And if so, you'll know which one to invest in, because they are not the same. But first, let's figure out what we are investing in. I mean, what is a Bitcoin ETF? A Bitcoin Spot ETF is an exchange traded fund that directly stars Bitcoin in a secure digital wallet. The purpose of this kind of ETF is to mirror as closely as possible the price of Bitcoin. Basically, this is a regulated way that allows having exposure to Bitcoin and profiting from market volatility, even for individuals like my grandmother using regular brokerage accounts. But which ETF is a better choice? And is it worth buying ETF at all if you can buy actual Bitcoins? That's a $20,000 question, because that's how much you can waste on ETFs if you choose the wrong one. So here are the tickers of all approved Bitcoin ETFs. Each of them you can find in your brokerage account and technically they are absolutely the same. But each exchange traded fund manages an underlying asset, in our case Bitcoin. And because the fund is essentially managing your money, each fund charges a small fee, which is called an expense ratio. Any ETF on the market has this kind of fee and in Bitcoin ETFs it ranges from 0.2% to 1.5% per year. And while at first glance the fee may seem very small, in reality it grows like a snowball and over time can cost you more than a brand new Tesla Model 3. Let me explain. Let's say you want to invest $10,000 in each of Bitcoin ETFs with the lowest and highest fees on the market to feel the difference. This is the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF, ticker BitB, and Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, ticker GBTC. Let's imagine that the average Bitcoin return will be around 35% annually and also that every month we will buy around $100 of each of the ETFs. That's our investment plan. Based on this data, in 10 years we will have around $263,000 on the balance sheet of our BitB ETF. It will gain almost $68,000 in profit, but during 10 years of holding it, we will pay almost $1,400 in fees to the Bitwise fund itself, given that the fund's commission will remain the same, 0.2% for all that time, and that sounds reasonable. Because on the balance sheet of our GBTC fund, we will have only $240,000, we will make only $62,000 in profit, and for 10 years, we will pay almost $10,000 in commissions, given the 1.5% expense ratio of GBTC. The 1.3% difference in expense ratio equals as much as $22,000 difference in our case, simply because we picked the wrong ETF with a high expense ratio. But don't worry, here is a list of all ETFs with their fees and not all of them have such huge commissions. But even a low expense ratio does not guarantee that you will earn more. You see, each of these funds tries to mirror the Bitcoin price movement as closely as possible. And the key word to that sentence is tries. So they all don't track the exact one-to-one -one volatility of Bitcoin. And to illustrate how it actually works, I will use some data from a recent video from Andre Jig about Bitcoin ETFs. Hope he won't be mad at me, so shout out Andre Jig. And by the way, I will leave the link to his video in the description below. Imagine you bought all Bitcoin ETFs on January 10th at the start of day trading for the same amount of money. How much difference will there be between them just 10 days later? So, Andre G ran this exact experiment to find out how well ETFs will perform relative to each other. And what do you think? The ETF with the lowest expense ratio, ticker BitB from Bitwise, takes the honorable 8th place in the ETF ranking, with a result of negative 8.43%. It's strange, but despite having the smallest fees among all the funds, you don't get the best performance. This happens because while spot ETFs try to mirror the performance of Bitcoin very closely, ETFs can have tracking errors in the price relative to the value of Bitcoin, which will cause a difference in the performance of these two assets. The reasons for this difference may be due to the small liquidity of the fund, the late rebalancing of the fund's holding, and management fees. This tells us that in addition to the expense ratio, we need to look at the things like the fund's brand, reputation, and experience in crypto. 
All of these factors affect ETF price. By the way, the worst performance in this experiment was obviously shown by the fund with the largest expense ratio. Ticker DeFi, it is negative more than 15%. And next, just one spot above, is BlackRock's iBit ETF, with a performance of negative 12.5% and a fee of 0.25%. This shows us that in the short term, the expense ratio is not the most important factor when choosing an ETF. But what I know for sure, that our time funds with large fees should perform noticeably poorly. In the middle of our rank, we have all the other funds with fees between 0.2% and 0.3%. This is FBTC from Fidelity, ARCB from Katie Wood, BRRRR from Walkier, and so on. The difference in the performance of these funds is less than a percent and they are not significantly different. So when choosing between these funds, I'd rather base my choice on the safety of the fund, which I'll cover in a minute. And just so you don't get bored, the leader of the rating is Invesco Galaxy Bitcoin ETF, ticker BTCO with a result of minus 7.38% and an expense ratio of 0.38%. Its performance significantly stands out from the rest of the funds while not having the lowest fees. You might ask yourself, all ETFs are in the negative. Why do we think minus 7% is a good result? But the thing to keep in mind here is that all these numbers include the fact that Bitcoin was in a downtrend on this time frame. So therefore the performance of all funds is in a negative. And we don't know yet how these same ETFs will behave when Bitcoin goes up, because they are still very young and there just isn't enough data to predict the future. Perhaps the ones that fall the most will grow the most, or the opposite, the ones that fall the least will grow the least. But we don't know yet. What we do know for sure is that it is ideal for every fund to have a full correlation with the Bitcoin value. Now, before we get to the last point, which I personally find crucial when choosing between Bitcoin ETFs and Bitcoin, let's dive into scenarios where investing in Bitcoin ETFs can be really beneficial, despite the difference in performance and the quite large fund fees. What does buying an ETF give us compared to Bitcoin? First of all, buying ETFs gives us regulatory oversight. When you purchase your own bitcoins, you might be doing so without the backing of clear, standardized regulations. In simple words, you might be scammed or your exchange might go bankrupt and so on. With just bitcoin, in these cases, you are not protected in any way. Spot bitcoin ETFs are subject to rules that ensure transparency and protect investors. So if your brokerage account is insured by SIPC, the insurance should cover crypto ETFs as well, for scenarios like if one of the funds you invested in collapses. Secondly, convenience, but I would say it's a benefit and a drawback at the same time. When buying Bitcoin ETFs, you're excused from managing wallets with Bitcoins, navigating online crypto exchanges and grappling with private and public keys. The good news is you won't lose your Bitcoins. The bad news is you're trusting a large corporation with the storage of an asset that cannot be retrieved if it's already stolen, and that's a very risky situation to be in. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Because let's cover the main benefit first. The main benefit of Bitcoin ETFs for all individual investors will be in retirement accounts like IRAs. Because when buying Bitcoin inside an IRA account using pre tax money, you can gain more momentum and potential to grow your investment while covering those fund fees and tracking errors. Personally, I think it's kind of risky to invest your retirement money in Bitcoin. But if you're the kind of person who likes to gamble with your retirement money, Bitcoin ETFs inside an IRA account are the way to go. For investors who simply want to buy Bitcoin in a taxable account, they might be better off buying the crypto directly from an exchange, because there are much lower commissions and for the last following simple reason. The amount of Bitcoins that each fund manages is counted in the billions of dollars, making the funds a most desirable target for hackers. But unlike cash in a bank, stolen Bitcoins can quickly be transferred anonymously to North Korea and are almost impossible to retrieve. Mix that with the fact that almost all Bitcoin ETFs hold their assets with one company, Coinbase, this looks like the perfect setup for a disaster. Or vice versa, Fidelity stores all their Bitcoins by themselves, but they don't have as much experience in self-storage of crypto as Coinbase. So my guess is they might be even more vulnerable to hacker attacks. So which of these ETFs should you buy and should you? That's an individual decision for everyone. But personally, for maximum profit and safety, I see only one solution here. Buying Bitcoin from the exchange and storing it on a hardware wallet. 
First off, unless you have billions, you're not going to be a target for huge hacking groups. It doesn't make sense for them to target just your wallet personally. Secondly, even a 40 bucks hardware wallet will give you a similar level of security as the funds have, and without paying multi-thousand dollar management fees. You can click here to watch my in-depth review about this beginner-friendly hardware wallet. With this little device, you can safely store any crypto, all without hassle with the seed phrase. So click here and see you in the next video.